Many of us recall the day we watched the Cathedral of Notre Dame du Paris burning. A lot of people felt a lot of emotion for a building that's almost 1,000 years old. For me, it's like when I find out a member of the family has been in a car accident. At first, I want to make sure everyone is okay. And after that, the car, well, it was just a car. For that reason, we should be happy that there was no loss of life during the fire that destroyed much of the roof and interior of the cathedral. Paris and the church will rebuild. They rebuilt after the destruction of the French Revolution, and they will do it again. Natural elements and man-made disasters endanger all life, all art, and all architecture. The world has never been static. It's constantly changing. It will frequently destroy itself before it renews itself. For that reason, anything mankind makes will eventually be worn down by the elements. So then, for buildings like this to survive, it's not just due to the original skill of the architects and craftspeople who built it. It is, in the nicest sense of the word, cult that keeps great buildings like this in repair. They must be renewed over and over again so that those of us who come centuries later can be awed by their glory. Each generation must embrace the building and the reason for which it was built in order for our greatest edifices to continue. This includes buildings adopted by a new culture. It is this kind of dedication that has helped preserve great buildings like the Pantheon, Hagia Sophia, and just about anything built by Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright has his own cult going. The fire burned the wood framing of the roof and the wood flesh aka spire, which stood at the intersection of the transept and the nave above the stone vaults. This burning wood crashed through the stone and destroyed much of the contents on the inside. Rebuilding will not be easy. The building and the people working on it will be in constant danger. The stone walls and towers still stand, but they were not impervious to damage by fire. And the flying buttresses that once pushed back against the forces of the stone groin of the nave and the wood roof were pushing against nothing. They had to be braced with woodwork, much like they had when they were first built. But in rebuilding, perhaps the city of Paris will rediscover the faith that originally built the cathedral. The Catholic Church, the belief system that built Notre Dame, has sustained its own self-inflicted damage. But after being tested by fire, it too will rise again. Rebuilding at first appears to be a burden, but it can be an opportunity. It's like when God places the care of a debilitated loved one into our hands. It is an opportunity to show and to feel how God's love infuses us with love for others. In the architecture school at Notre Dame, for clarity's sake, Notre Dame is in South Bend. Notre Dame is in Paris. This is the best I can do with my New York articulation. In the architecture school at the University of Notre Dame, we had the opportunity to study in Europe, based in Rome, for a year at essentially no additional cost. It was a dream come true for a middle-class kid who never thought such a thing was obtainable. Our class arrived in Europe, in Paris, and that first evening many of us went to Notre Dame. For me, it was the revelation of the enduring power of a great building, built before our lands were even known to Europeans, and its continuous use as a place of religious worship for almost a thousand years. I had already visited many Frank Lloyd Wright houses in Oak Park, also with my classmates, and I had lamented how many of them had been turned into museums unto themselves and had lost their original purpose. But Notre Dame was still a Catholic church, vibrant with my Catholic faith, both ancient and alive at the same time. I returned to Paris later that year to celebrate Christmas Midnight Mass at Notre Dame, and many years after that with my wife on our honeymoon. I'm sure a lot of you have stories about Notre Dame du Paris that are just as impactful. And so another generation faces the difficult questions of rebuilding. Do you recreate the past and pretend nothing has happened? Or do you allow the seams to show on the repairs and thus embed the history of the building in itself? Or do you take the approach that using contemporary techniques 
and contemporary style allows the building to show itself as a living document that renews itself the way a tree changes slightly every spring. From what I have seen, Notre Dame is in good hands with people who are seriously considering all these questions. Consider the central flesh atop the cathedral. The one we love was designed by the architect of the 19th century restoration, Eugène Violet Le Duc. Should it be rebuilt as it was, perhaps this time in metal and not in wood? Or maybe this is an opportunity for the 21st century to leave its mark on the centuries old cathedral. It got me thinking what I might design for the top of the cathedral should I be asked. I have not been asked. But I started wondering what recent or current architects might design if they were commissioned to do the new flesh for the cathedral at Notre Dame. What would Frank Gehry's design look like? Or Philip Johnson's? Perhaps Saha Hadid would be asked. Or I am pay. I'm sure Frank Lloyd Wright would have an idea. And of course, there's always Miguel Calatrava. And then I thought, well, maybe it shouldn't be put in the hands of architects. Maybe other designers would contribute something, something atop the cathedral that would tell us it's in Paris, such as a baguette, or maybe something much more practical for the 21st century, and I think this is the most viable, the Verizon. Much of what we love about Notre Dame was due to the restoration that occurred after the damage done during the anti-clerical French Revolution. Its restoration was inspired by Victor Hugo, who wrote Notre Dame de Paris, which some refer to as the hunchback of Notre Dame, to regenerate a love for the building and its art. Story and buildings are often intertwined into our consciousness. Think Washington Irving and how his book, Tales of the Alhambra, sparked its restoration. And you can't think of the Empire State Building without thinking about King Kong. In his novel, while the Archdeacon is destroying a printing press, Victor Hugo compares Notre Dame with a book. Story is how humanity connects our ideas to each other and to posterity, and buildings are a part of that library. They are books that tell the narrative of humanity's aspirations for greatness. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.